Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I am a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is ITX Run Function Options. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. For this practical how to video, I'm going to be going through some of the options that you can use with a basic run function. I'm going to point you to the documentation links where you can read up on further options. And finally, I'm going to show you how to use the integration flow designer tool to determine which options you should use by making those choices with a GUI and then seeing what choices those lead to at the command line. On screen is a syntax summary of the run function. At the absolute minimum, you have a single text expression representing the name of the map to run. Optionally, you have additional arguments that will be the command option list. The run function returns a single blob text item. It is worth noting that the resource registry can be used in either argument number one for the map name or argument number two for the command option list or both. Here are some examples of basic command option overrides. For example, dash AEU equals dot will produce an audit execution log with a unique file name in the map directory for every execution. Dash TIO will turn on tracing for all input and output cards. Dash IF1 followed by a file name will override input card 1 with the file adapter and produce the file given in the file name. Dash OD4, followed by a connection string, will override output card number 4 with the database adapter and use the connection string to connect to and optionally execute commands on the database. The link at the bottom of the screen takes you directly to this documentation for a summary of all command execution overrides. Here we have the ITX 10.1 Design Studio. I have my project open, Project 1. I've opened my source map test.mms and within that I'm executing the map test1. As you can see my output card has a run function. I'm calling the map blob.mmc and I'm passing in a couple of overrides. I'm using an if1 to override the input card1 with the file adapter to read the file input1.txt and I'm overriding the output adapter with jale on card1 and the connection string is as shown there. Now when I show you the file explorer and there is no file called input1.txt in there, there's also no file called output.txt. Let's build and run this map. The map has completed successfully. You will note that there is now a file called output.txt and the content is totally and utterly useless to us in error number 12. Now something went wrong but we're not really getting enough information. So on the end of my run function, I'm going to add a last error msg function. Save, build and run one more time. And now when I open my output.txt, it tells us something more useful, source not available. As you can see in my input override, I'm trying to say the map should read input1.txt. This file does not currently exist. Create a completely new file called input1.txt. We'll put some information in that file and run the map one more time. Now the map is completed successfully again. Looking at our output, we have another failure, 9, target not available. This is because my override, the JALE adapter on card number 1, is pointing to a host called localhost and I'm not running the SAP system on this computer. So that is why that has failed. Let's change the output override to a simple file instead. OF1 and then within the single apostrophes we are going to put the output file name outtemp1.txt. Save, build and run again. And now we see that the map is completed successfully as always. And our output shows a zero, which is a success, and no error message from the last error message function. 
and in fact we do have an out temp1.txt which in theory contains the information from the override that we sent in uh, input1.txt and the content of that was hello. Okay, so why do we have to run this last error message function on the end just to get the failure? Why does it keep why does this top level map keep succeeding? Well, in short, the run function needs to be wrapped in a valid fail pair to ensure that the top level map records the failure condition of the run function. So we've wrapped the entire run function in a valid. The run function is the first argument. The second argument to the valid is to fail the top level map. You could put a custom message in between these quotes, but I'm not going to bother at the moment. So now when we temporarily remove the input1.txt, the run map will fail again. Now also the top level map will fail. There we go, fail function aborted map. And if we bring that file back again and run one more time, this time it succeeds, map completed successfully. Let's change the input override to an echo. So input echo, card one, size five bytes, we're going to send in the word hello. Fail function aborted map because the data doesn't match the size that I've specified because now that I've got a size of five, I don't need these single apostrophes. Save, build and run. Now the map completes successfully. Okay, instead of using the IE1S format, there's actually a function that will organize this for you so that you don't need to send in and it's called echo in. So what we're going to echo in is to card one, the fixed string hello. Now this behaves exactly the same as the previous uh, example. Map completed successfully. Okay, but what if instead of a fixed string, it was an object? We can put the object name in there. Save, build and run. What if the input object was in a foreign character set such as Epsidic, for example? If this object was defined as Epsidic, here it would be echoed in, but during the send to the run function, it would be converted temporarily to UTF-16 or Unicode and then sent to the run map. But if your run map was expecting Epsidic, you need to stop that from happening. This is where the C package or C text functions come in. So I'm going to use C package. First argument to my C package is the echo in for the first card. And the second argument is I'm going to say that this data is already in the native format, so there's no need to convert it. So now there will be no automatic conversion of in one from Epsidic to Unicode. It will be sent exactly as is. And then the run map that I'm calling, if it's expecting Epsidic, it will receive Epsidic. For the second part of this demonstration, I'm going to show you a quick trick where you can use the integration flow designer as a tool to help you find out the correct overrides for your run function. So let's take the integration flow designer and start a new document. I'm going to change the execution mode from launcher to command. Then I'm going to add to the canvas a simple blob compiled map that I've been using so far. Now I'm going to edit the launcher settings and I'm going to use the GUI to set the options that I want in my run function. For example, if I want to turn the map audit on and I want to set the file location from map to custom, specify a custom directory of C colon backslash temp backslash and the file name I'm going to change to unique. For an output override, I'm going to change the file adapter to point to a different file, not the compiled in one, dummyout.txt, but instead I'm going to get it to write to output.txt. From the transaction, I'm going to change the on failure from rollback to commit. On the input side, I'm going to change the file from dummy in one to input.txt. I'm actually going to put a path on the front of that C colon backslash data files backslash. And the transaction I'm going to say on success delete. 
Okay, so I've set a bunch of options in the GUI there. How would I use those in a run function? Well, if we now go from the system menu and choose generate, we can generate a file called temp.txt. I've got one already. When we open that file, we have a quick summary of all the options we would need to use in our run function to get those options that we specified in the GUI to activate against our run function. So dash AEU equals dash IF1 and dash OF1 options fully listed out there for the options that you specified. For example, the X here signifies that the file should be deleted once the map has completed successfully. So there we have it. A little tip for you, using the integration flow designer to help you work out the correct overrides for your run functions. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please like and comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.